Tower Bridge is one of the main attractions of London and one of the symbols of England. Despite the bridge being located in London, it is not London Bridge. How is that, you will ask me? Well, that's two different bridges. There is one called Tower Bridge and another called London Bridge. Tower Bridge and London Bridge. Tower Bridge is relatively new since its construction began in 1886 and was finished in 1894. Starting from the second half of the 20th century, Tower Bridge began to be widely recognized around the world and became one of the main symbols of London with only Big Ben and after Trafalgar Square and London Eye. By the way, Tower and London Bridge are neighbors. London Bridge is located upstream, even though these two facilities have absolutely different history and style of architecture. Tower Bridge is 244 meter drawbridge with two support towers of 65 meters height. The central span between them is divided into two lifting wings, which weights over 1000 tons each. They can be raised to an angle of up to 80 degrees for the passage of ships. Each wing is equipped with a counterweight, which minimizes the expenditure of efforts and allows the bridge to be raised quickly. Due to modern technologies, it can be opened in just 90 seconds. Some records of that time evidence that the foundation stone was laid on the 21st of July 1886 by the Prince of Wales, the future King Edward VII. It took almost eight years and the labor of 432 workers to build it. Horace Jones, its architect, died in 1882 even before the job was done. There was the tower subway tunnel on the, the river to cross Thames from one bank to another before the construction of the bridge was over. Passage through that tunnel cost one penny. I mean, can you imagine that to pay for passing through the tunnel? After some time, these and other tunnels were closed and replaced by bridges. Yet, one of them survived and you can use it to the present day in the Greenwich area. By the way, Greenwich is one of my favorite boroughs. I've been there many times and filmed videos from there. And you definitely should watch the episode where I made a review on the University of Greenwich. The name of the bridge, which might be literally translated as bridge with towers, is not related to its towers, but to the fact that the bridge is located next to the museum of the eponymous fortress. In 1977, after the silver anniversary of the Queen reign, Tower Bridge was repainted in the colors of the flag, red, white and blue. Tower Bridge is currently one of the five bridges of the British capital that were taken over by City Bridge Trust, a charity organization. Tower Bridge Towers house galleries on the top of them, which became a museum in 1982. The Tower Bridge Exhibition It illustrates the history of the bridge via interactive routes. You can also see here a steam engine that was the power source for the entire mechanism until 1976, when the system was electrified. A covered walkway open to the public offers a wonderful view on Thames. There is an opportunity to join an excursion to hydraulic cranes located below the water level and lifting the bridge for today. There is also an observation deck with a glass floor, from which you can look around London from a height of 42 meters. As we already know, the museum was opened only in 1982. Are you interested in what was here in the previous century? While it's easy, the towers are connected to one another and earlier were intended for pedestrians who needed to cross Thames at the moment of lifting the drawbridge. But residents of London used this overpass reluctantly. It seems that they were too lazy to go up to such a high tower. Tower Bridge and figures 11,000 tons of steel was needed for construction. 21,000 of cars drive over the bridge every day. 300 is the number of steps by overcoming which you can reach the tower. 50 is how many times a day the wings of the bridge were used to be raised. Now it's done only a few times a week. There is a special schedule for raising the bridge, which is made by the bridge staff for the passage of large vessels. And it's impossible to correct the schedule even for VIPs. This is connected to a couple of stories. In 1952, a London double decker came to be on the bridge while it was being raised. The driver had to accelerate to literally fly from one wing to another about the one meter gap. The driver has been awarded. 
in 1997, a motorcade of the US President Bill Clinton was even divided into two parts because of the bridge raising. There are other interesting, sometimes funny, cases linked with the Tower Bridge. 2003, a man called David Crick broke into the bridge and spent almost a week there. Special interest and excitement were drawn because David wore a Spider-Man costume. The bridge was closed for nearly a week. Next to London in Windsor, there is a Legoland. The exact miniature copy of Tower Bridge is located in this amusement park, and of course, the bridge is a star of many films. It appeared in Sherlock Holmes, Spider Man, The Mummy Return. Pottington and Bridget Jones' diary. There is also a very funny fact. As I said earlier, Tower Bridge is often confused with London Bridge. The confusion is so common that once in 1967, some oligarch named Robert McCulloch purchased London Bridge, while being absolutely sure that he was purchasing Tower Bridge. Undoubtedly, Tower Bridge is a landmark of London which is gorgeous in any season. However, if time allows, watch the bridge in the evening as well, when it's already dark. Guys, if you liked the video, don't forget to smash the like button and also don't forget to check out our second serious maps education there we talk a lot about education and educational institutions around the world and of course if you're interested in learning about some interesting british attraction write about it in the comment section and we'll definitely make a video about it